Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into my channel here. We pour all kinds of different types of concrete. Today we're pouring a house floor and a patio floor. They're kind of connected. You can see where the patio slab's going right there. It's kind of facing the lake. This is on a pretty big lake here in Maine. And what we like about these types of foundations is the top of the concrete wall is the same height as the top of the slab. So it's basically just like pouring a concrete slab. A lot of the concrete floor pours we do are down inside foundations like a basement. But this one is, you know, top of wall is top of slab and that's, that's kind of what we like. It makes pouring it real easy. Now, if you're new to my channel, we do all kinds of concrete flat work, you know, house floors like this, garage floors, patios, pool decks, broom finish stuff, stamp concrete. We do a lot of concrete repair. We even do epoxy coating. So if you like that kind of stuff, please go down there and hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now we're just getting started. This company we're pouring with today, uh, a lot of times they like to have us start at 6 a.m. in the morning, which means we usually get done pouring by something like this might take us, I don't know, about an hour. This is two trucks. It's 50 by 30. We got 21 yards coming for both the patio and the house floor. We, our floor mix, you know, when we do a, an exterior thing like a patio like this included with the floor, we'll generally get a 4,000 PSI concrete with air entrainment, fiber mesh. Uh, all, our mama pours have water reducer in it so we can pour a little bit of a looser slump without adding water. So that's, that's generally what we'll do. Our basic floor mix, if we're just doing an inside concrete floor, is a 3,500 PSI with low air, fiber mesh, you know, water reducer. So we just bumped up the cement a little bit because we got some exterior part to this. And we bumped up the air just a little bit. The air entrainment just helps with the concrete being able to withstand freeze and thaw cycles here in Maine. When it's exterior, it might be exposed to some ice and some snow. We don't have, you know, I've been I've been finishing concrete with air in it since I was 15 years old, so for over 40 years. We've never had trouble power troweling concrete, you know, hand troweling concrete when it's an interior floor like this. If it has air entrainment, it's just it has all to do with timing, being able to notice if you if you do have trouble. But in general, most of the time, you know, unless you're pan floating with maybe a rider. Uh, you're not going to have trouble. We just we just use walk behinds, 36 inch walk behind power trial. So we don't have, we don't run into trouble with the air causing any types of problems later on down the road. Now the access here was pretty decent. When you can back a truck pretty much all the way around a foundation, you know, on a on a residential job like this, that's good access. Most of the times you can reach one side and that's it. And, you know, you might be having to order a pump or maybe use a conveyor truck to reach. Today, today with everything was right out of the chute, it made pouring it really easy. And one of the first things we do, you know, we're shooting for four inches thick on the concrete. We got our laser set up so we can check as we go. We make wet pads in the concrete. We screed everything using wet pads, which is what the guys are doing right there. That's called wet pad screeding. So we'll screed right off the pad we make with the laser in the middle and then off from the, the magged edges. We, we mag float the edges first to get them nice and smooth and match the top of that wall. And then the guys, they can just, you know, if they have to, if the screed's long enough, they can screed right off the top of the concrete wall. But if not, they can use just the mag part that we mag nice and smooth and go right off what we call the wet pad. Those blue and those white kind of pipes you're seeing, they're just hot and cold water. A lot of the stuff now is, you know, PVC piping. There's not too much copper piping used anymore in new residential construction. And that yellow stuff you see under the concrete, that's a 15 mil vapor barrier. That's called Stego Wrap. So the company that makes that is, is Stego. This is a bunch of different companies that make that stuff. That's the one that we can purchase the easiest from the company we buy it from. And then the red stuff is just tape. They tape the seams together. It's a moisture proofing tape. And that just helps keep moisture from coming up through the ground, up through the concrete, into the 
you know, into the house later on down the road. There's also two inches of styrofoam under there, which is code in Maine. You know, most, most towns have to go by the state code if the town has so many people in the town population-wise. So the, the city kind of, the city, I mean, the state kind of makes them put in two inches of styrofoam under everything. You know, in those, a four by eight sheet of styrofoam, two inch styrofoam is like 50 bucks. So that adds quite a bit of cost to the concrete floor pour if you got to install that stuff. You can see that slump we're pouring. That's right around a six, six and a half inch slump with a water reducer. Flows pretty good, pulls, pushes around pretty good, screeds pretty easy. Just makes life in general, pouring concrete floors pretty easy. We will pour, you know, we have concrete lined up every single morning during the week. And generally we're pouring something similar to this, bigger, smaller. You know, maybe it's a pool deck or maybe it's stamped concrete one day, but it's, it's usually pouring every single day all throughout the year. Except for maybe, you know, there's days in the winter up here where we don't pour every single day. But, but work from usually, you know, the end of March, 1st of April, all the way through until about the 1st of December is pretty much normal like this. That's, you know, we got, uh, there's a few months in the winter where things get a little cold. You know, they'll start adding hot water to the concrete. But sometimes just outside conditions aren't good enough to pour in if it's if it's outside like this. And yes, people do want us to pour concrete right outside like this in the middle of the winter, which is, I don't know, it's kind of crazy to me. But there are some days that we can do it, depending on temperatures and, you know, the temperature of the concrete, adding some accelerator to it, you know, and making sure that it gets covered really good afterwards so it doesn't freeze. But not our probably not our most favorite thing to do is pour in the middle of the winter you can see how pouring right out of the chute kind of makes it pretty easy to get the concrete where you need it and then you know i personally like guiding the chute myself we're using rear dumps today this company only has rear dumps that we're working with there's a few other companies we pour with that have the front dump concrete trucks where the truck driver controls the chute and generally you know they do a pretty good job doing that but they don't they don't know exactly how fast we like to go how much we like to fill up so there's a lot of extra moving the chute around going back and forth getting it to where we need it if i'm controlling the chute and i'm controlling the pace and the tempo of the concrete then things go pretty smooth we're using the vibra screed today everything's flat here we just got a few pipes to go around so Viber Screed in this makes it really easy. If you've never used a Viber Screed before, that's a pretty good one right there. The meat, the Screed Demon from MBW, the Battery Screed. There's a bunch of different companies that make these. And we've used a bunch of different ones. This is definitely one of the easier, lighter ones that we've used. For residential stuff, this thing works fine. At the right slump, you know, you can't pour the concrete too stiff or we found it's just going to be harder to, to get level and flat with this. There's just not enough down pressure on it. Kind of gives you a really good uh, view of just what it looks like between the tripod camera and then the head camera I have on. What it looks like from my point of view as I'm screeding this down. Then we got Darren over there on the right, Luke on the left, kind of kind of puddling the concrete behind me. It's their job just to make sure I don't get low or too high, so I can just keep moving without stopping. I want to go from one, you know, when I start, I don't want to stop until I run out of pad, basically. Or we have to stop because the bull float can't reach. Right there, that's kind of what I like doing right there, going from one end all the way down to the other and then I run out of pad and we stop that that makes screeding really smooth you can see that concrete right there is just a little stiff that's probably like a five so we want to give that he's got about 10 yards on we'll give it 10 gallons and that brings it up to looking kind of like this with the water reducer in it 
And yes, you can add water to the truck, even though it's already got the water reducer in it. You can add a little bit. It usually doesn't take quite as much water to get a loose slump when you got water reducer in the concrete versus if you didn't have water reducer in it, it's going to take a little bit more water. The water reducer kind of makes the kind of makes the qualities of the concrete kind of repel each other, if that makes sense. So it makes them more liquidy, kind of like kind of like having some marbles that that want to stick to each other. You add the water reducer, and then those marbles now want to repel from each other. They don't want to stick together. It makes it just kind of looser. That's kind of what the concrete's doing. It makes it looser in there. But it makes it real easy to work with. It's still creamy. It still mags real good. Still bull floats really nice. Now, I'm going to get to the finishing part here in a minute. We're going to show you, you know, we're going to get that patio poured. I'm going to show you some of the finishing we're doing on that and in the background you'll see you know this stuff setting up pretty good today you'll see that some power troweling is going to be going on while we're finishing the patio and that's how easy it is to screed right there then the guy just comes behind with the bull float and it's pretty much just one pass down and back with the bull float pick it up move it over and just keep going now this is the patio so we would you know we're just hired here to pour and finish we don't design the concrete we don't set up the specs for it or nothing we're told just use 4,000 psi concrete with fiber mesh and a lot of our pours are like that here in Maine a lot of our residential pours are just specced with fiber mesh now no no wire no rebar and we don't we don't really have any trouble with it as long as the sub base is prepped right you know it's got good gravel there it's got good compaction we put our joints in we'll either saw cut joints in or we'll hand tool joints in sometimes we'll do both <laughs> and we don't have trouble with the stuff cracking and breaking just got to know what you're doing you got you to pour the right concrete the right design you got to finish it properly and you got to join it properly and we don't have trouble with that stuff i know I'll get a lot of comments on here about what no steel your concrete's just going to break up steel just all steel does you know rebar wire especially wire. all right well, that went pretty good so that's 1500 square feet that's 50 by 30 including the patio we'll boom finish that cut a couple joints in it that pitches in about an inch from from front to back towards the lake this this floor is going to be this is going to be the finished floor so we'll power trial it really nice and smooth and then they're going to hire a guy to come in and polish it so basically the process is just about the same as when someone's going to polish it so what they want is just something nice flat and level the, the more flat the floor is the more level it is without any waves or dips or humps the easier it is to polish for those guys so all right so back to talking about steel for a second you know all that's going to do is basically help hold the concrete together. It's not necessarily just going to keep it from breaking. And that's the, you know, I get that a lot. So here we are starting to hand tool our joint in the patio. We decided to hand tool these. We're going to saw cut joints in the floor up top. That'll get done the same day. See, that'll get done today too, after the guys get done power troweling. But we put two joints in there. Those are about eight feet apart. This thing's about six feet wide, 24 feet long. We broke it into thirds. And now we're just getting our edges kind of edged out, getting them rounded off, getting them roughed in. Concrete's still kind of soft right now. But you want to get, if you're hand tooling stuff, you want to get those joints cut in pretty early. We don't like doing it like right after the pour. We like the concrete to have just a little bit of firmness to it. So when you run that, that hand joiner through it or the edger like this the concrete isn't so loose it just kind of collapses back into the joint itself so we, we probably waited we probably waited 20 20 ish minutes after we got done pouring this to come back here and start doing this stuff now if you wait too long then you're gonna you're gonna have trouble getting that hand joiner down there for sure because there's not much weight to that thing so that's made to put in joints pretty early. And you can see Luke's keeping the, the edger nice and flat, just kind of rounding off the edge for now. 
And now we kind of wait. We waited a little bit for the bleed water to dry up. It's pretty dry. This is probably 40 minutes now after the pour. Concrete's firmed up pretty good. You can put some down pressure on it. You can see Eric's kind of leaning on another mag while he's for leverage. Luke's leaning on it now, kind of reaching out, mag floating. Still a little bit too soft or too too green to put a broom to it yet. And I know we're only mag floating this, but we're going to get it all mag floated out nice and smooth, get it all roughed in and ready to go. And then we'll give it, I think we gave it 20 minutes here. Starting to firm up really good. You can see Luke in the background with the power trial, so he can walk on the stuff. So the patio part's setting up really good. We're just mag floating it out again, nice and tight. Making it making it really, really good. And then Darren's going to come behind with the broom as soon as we get it all magged out. And he's just going to broom finish. And, you know, we could we could actually go over it again if we wanted to. It kind of depends on how smooth or how fine of a broom finish look you want. We like going for like a medium to fine. We don't like it too rough. Whether we're brooming a sidewalk or a pool deck or even a, you know a, a patio like this, that's a pretty good broom finish right there for just a regular old patio. Just using our two foot broom here too. It's nice and light. We got a three footer just like that. We got a four footer when we do really bigger areas, but for something small like this, the two footer is pretty good. Set it down, walk it backwards, nice and slow and steady. Keep the handle at the same same slope. Don't lift the handle up, move it down, and then that helps keep everything looking nice and uniform. And then I'm gonna leave the finished joint. We decided on this one to picture frame everything. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll leave that joint looking just like it does right after we broom it. Just, I don't know, it all, some people like one way, some people like the other. We'll go, we'll go whatever we think looks good. We'll, get, we'll also put the finished edge on here in a minute. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But because there's only two joints here, we, we'll put the finished picture frame look on it. I don't know. I've been doing that forever, so I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Which way do you like better? Just leaving it without the finish groove marks or with them like we're doing one nice thing is I could reach the the hand groove mark from the outside on both sides so that makes it easy putting it in otherwise we're kind of running a board up across there or a straight edge leaning it up on top of that wall and reaching out from that way but it didn't matter I could walk around top of that wall pretty easy Being pretty fussy with that, making sure it looks really nice up against the house foundation. <laughs> we also, we like kind of cleaning the broom, kind of getting the paste off it. I know some guys will just keep running the broom over the whole thing without cleaning it once. We found that leaves a lot of like little concrete balls on the surface, concrete snotties. And yes, those will kind of, kind of brush off or kind of break off the next day like Darren right there right at the very end there was a few concrete balls you saw there I don't like leaving them on there I like I like it looking nice and clean and neat like this that way if the homeowner shows up you know their first impression of it is wow that thing looks really good versus what the heck are all those little concrete balls on there for you know it's just I like the first impression from them is, is kind of more of the wow effect than the what the heck is that stuff effect so we'll clean the broom you know in between every pole or sometimes we can go a couple poles before we clean it and that's what it looks like right there for a nice clean broom finish picture framed look see Darren's kind of cleaning off a couple of those concrete balls right there and cleaning that little part up making it look really good and then Luke's in the back He's just kind of, he's keeping power troweling. He's just learning how to power trowel. The other two guys are mag floating and steel troweling edges. And then I'm going to put the finished tool on the edger to clean this up and give it the picture frame look. 
And I want to know what you guys think. What are you guys thinking about how this thing is looking right now? Putting that finished edger mark is really easy if you do the, you know, the pre-edger stuff first and making sure everything you did first was nice and flat and level and you know you cleaned up all the raw coals any little imperfections in the edge when you get back to do this finished part right here that makes that makes this part really easy you're not having to fix anything you do not you're not having to touch up anything it's pretty much just putting enough down pressure on it to make that edge look nice and smooth well, that's going to do it for this, guys. Again, if you haven't subscribed, go down there and hit subscribe now. Hit like if you like it. Share this video on your on your social media. You know, check me out on Instagram at Everything About Concrete on TikTok at Everything About Concrete. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you on the next one.